Hey everybody, I have got myself a whole pile of drills out here, and I'm going to do a little quick review of this new Warrior drill from Harbor Freight. Now, I, I've gotten to where I started to like to use these, uh, these little Black & Deckers, because I mean, they're light as hell, and they're strong. But here's what was really shocking. Uh, that Black & Decker with one battery, uh, 60 bucks. You can get them for 49, you know, sometimes. But this is um, $29. So you look over here at the Harbor Freight thing here, you're seeing that it's $29 for this drill. And the battery's quite compatible in size and amperage with the lithium battery of the Black & Decker. Now, all these other drills that are out here, they're all NICAD. So, so what I have over here is I have a big Milwaukee. And this thing here is a just straight up arm breaking powerhouse. I mean, it's huge power in that motor. And it will, it will mess your wrist up if, you, if you're drilling heavy stuff. So, the second one here I've got is a Porter Cable. It's my favorite. Very strong, good, lighter by at least two pounds than that Milwaukee. Um, taught my kids how to use drills with this thing, which is the skill, just a little cheap 14.4 skill. And they learned to use that and they progressed to the Black & Decker, which is not much different, but 18 volt. And my youngest boy, I bought him this one and it lasted about six months. Um, not very good quality. Harbor Freight, but just, you know, $15. However, the new little Warrior drill is actually kind of shocked me in, in its light and very powerful and not just in spin, has an excellent clutch. I was shocked how good it set screws. And uh, I just bought it so that my youngest, he's 10, would have a good one to use, lighter, easier, because we disassemble and assemble a whole lot of stuff. I was able to buy two batteries, or the battery that comes with it. So we bought the battery, had the battery that came with it, and I bought an additional battery and still was $15 cheaper than buying just that one Black & Decker. What's really cool is the the motor in it is a is a high quality motor. Um, it's not brushless, you know, that's that's when you get into the high dollar stuff. But this little drill here, uh, let's get Daniel to chuck it up right quick. And he's been out here working on the trailer. And I'll show you some more of the trailer here. You're gonna see the converter, the big batteries, the new refrigerator in it, because the old one only lasted about a week after sitting for 40 years. So, you know, it didn't do a very good job. Now, he's going to drive this inch and a half screw into this board, and I'm going to show you the torque and power this thing has. It's got a light, too, um, that you can use on it uh, whenever you pull the trigger. So, um, if you see that, that is an inch and a half screw that he just shot into this board, and it even, see, it came through right there, split the other side a little bit. And that little drill, we've been using it on that battery now for about, I don't know, five hours. It's been run on that battery. Yeah, we've been and using it to uh, go up there and drill holes for the wiring. So yeah, all the wiring, he's ran all the wiring up in here, and I'll give you a little quick look up in here. Yeah. It's got a lot of wiring up in there everywhere all the speaker wiring all the floodlights these are for floodlights um this is for a back porch light because this is all a back porch back here and you guys who haven't watched my videos and you're seeing this for the first time go back and look at my videos okay this battery here was about 15 dollars for this lithium with a charger and they all come with um i got it plugged in out here back here they all come with these little chargers. Now these are kind of a unique setup. So let him show you what it does here. Plug in. See how it does that? It just plugs into the back of it. So you don't even have to pull it away from your drill. Now it won't run while you're yeah. charging it. 
you're but, to just run. but what's really, really impressive is that you see where it's got three tabs right there? You see the three tabs right here? Those three tabs means that it has two negatives and a positive. So that one's a positive. Now what that means is it has a thermal switch in here that'll disconnect the charging at a point where it senses temperature above a safe level for that lithium battery. Now it's not like some of these little drones like that video I did where the damn thing caught fire in the shop. This here is a safe battery. So I'm allowed, I was willing to go with buying that. Um, it's good for your kids, it's super light. And then we have the, this old drill master battery you see. It, yeah, and then if you look at his old drill master battery, it's only two contacts. It shows like these two slots here, but that's just for alignment. It's only two contacts, so it don't even have a thermal disconnect inside, which is dangerous. Um, it basically tells you to charge it for four hours. It gets hot as hell and you pull it apart and you just uh, pull it apart and it don't work. That's a row of all my drills and I've got a bunch of them. So let me show you this. This is my, my wall of rechargeable shame up in here and a bunch down here and saws all piled in there and even more saws and stuff. So we've got a bunch of this and, it comes with this and the skill of course came as a set with that little jigsaw and we rebuilt the battery on it so it works good. Um, now <clears throat> I'm giving you that and recommending that drill. So you see that drill right there? I recommend it. Um, it even doesn't make enough noise to make him a crazy so. For you guys that are watching my videos about my RV, um, this is the bug out camper and it now has the power converter box installed. Um, it, 30, it is 30 amps and that's not 30 amps of charging. Charging is about eight. Uh, and then it's controlled and it cycles down, has a circuitry for that. Here is the batteries that are up in here. And there is four batteries, one, two, three, and one here in the front. And then I'll have uh, storage for distilled water on this side. And this side over here, I will have a, a uh, hydrogen sensor. So we don't have a problem. Now it's gonna be this whole door out here will be vented. These are the two large terminals. And if you want to know where I got those, look at down below. I'm going to put a link to the stuff that I get, okay? Uh, you know, I'll put the Harbor Freight link for that and a coupon where you can find the coupons for them for like Retail Me Not or something. I'll find the best deal. I'll put them on there for you. I'll put the link to this stuff. These are badass 330 amp capacity. And the uh, they put it as 300, but they're actually 330 if you do the math on the girth there of the bolt. So... Um, the trailer is completely now insulated, and it's all scrap insulation that we used from other trailers we've tore apart, other RVs. And as it sits now, something that no one has yet to see other than Thor, the trailer's named after this crazy one, and that's crazy Thor, anime, and oh, and you guys who might have watched the video of anime getting surgery done on her, look at that, perfect healing, so and she's happy with it, 13 years old, so she's glad she healed up. Over here, we have the wall, outer wall of the trailer started. And there's the window that goes in here. All of this, there's the speaker wires for going in there, and the vents will be permanently removed because I have a pressurized exhaust system I've installed. I'll show you that later. And all of this has been First pre-primed, the air conditioning unit spot's all ready to go. I've got the notches for the feet to go in, and we have the outlet up here for the generator so that the generator can send power in, uh, in addition to other sources of power. Now here's the cool part. Here is a light that'll be a porch light, mounts right here. So I hate them when they're up high, they're right in your eyes, but this will be mounted low enough and you know, and it's the type that has security screws, they can't take it apart. So it'll be mounted here, puts light everywhere out here. The, uh, we've got a temporary cord, just using the wires plugged directly into the socket. I know, <laughs> don't have to tell me. Um, so that we can power everything up. Now it's sitting here now with it on park power. So let me get a, a light for you so we can see inside in here and you'll see what I've done. So now right back here, we have that one back here. 
which is the inverter. So we have 2200 watts true sine wave that comes through that. Over here, I'll pull it out and it'll kill everything in the trailer because it's on now. We have park power, which is this incoming wire here, and it will use that twist lock with adapter and 30 amp supply right there, okay? And then we have the red one, which is generator. And that's a 10 gauge wire that runs all the way to the front and comes out out there with a 20 amp plug. So let's look over here right quick. And the plug's actually rated for 27 amps and it's designed to where you can turn one of the blades so that you can use a 20 amp wire, a 20 amp plug on it. You see the little slots in there, how they're offset there for it. So we can make that a 20 amp. It's good for 27, uh, physical capability of it. Now this is going to mount right here and the generator will sit right out here. A little 2000 watt generator um that's the plans anyhow we haven't got it uh started up yet but all of this is that wood that i showed in the beginning of my videos of this bug out camper and if you remember in the video this was a overshot camper from an old truck that had been sitting stored for 40 plus years 1971 it was bought and sat in a building and that was it. So you can tell here by the refrigerator and I got it out here where you get better light. This thing here with all the labels, look at this, 1971. Look at that. It doesn't work. It worked for a week and then it quit and now it just gets hot. We've turned it upside down, let it set, does nothing. So um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get it flushed hopefully make it work because it's it's just beautiful it's blemish free nothing wrong with it it's like a brand new refrigerator well, basically it is so out here on the back of my trailer um i picked up a new max and i might do a video on that you know be watching for it it is a 16 gauge finished nailer of course your harbor freight stapler which makes life easy so when we're putting all these uh uh, supports and stuff on and do another kind of bracing and paneling it's just awesome and then my newest addition is this little win and then we have my pin nailer which is my little tnt so it's a very good little pin nailer works excellent so the video here is about this setup here um, but i want to get you a little walk through here and now we have all the lighting we replaced a lot we're putting this into LED. This is an old Coleman um, fluorescent. We are putting it into LED. There's the switch trigger right there for it. That'll all go back together like it did. The lens for being this age uh, is gonna go back on. These are the covers from the vents. We're trimming them down so that we can actually put in more insulation in the ceiling. And right up here, um, don't freak out. I don't need to hear it from the electrician superior people. That's going to turn on one half of an amp of DC LEDs in here. So you're talking seven watts. Big freaking deal. Works great. Um, that's where a light fixture was. You can see the outline of it. And when we're going to patch these with a little bit of stuff and make that go away. But we have some really nice speakers going in. There's the air conditioner power supply installed. Over here is a 110 volt outlet for whatever purpose, um, like a little sunbeam wall heater mount that you can put on there, a little 450 watt one. And there's 12 volt DC over here. You can see that over there. And that's going to be for where the 12 volt Skyworth television that I have 19 inch goes sitting right up here. The rest of it, however, is just in the process now we do have a pyramid five band graphic equalizer 1981 stereo going right here and here is the speaker wires there is the power supply going to be running up underneath and the speakers going out to the porch and speakers going up here for channel so all of this right there and i'll show you that little stereo right quick but yeah, it's a mess, man. We've made a big mess in here. 
but you can tell those people who never seen my videos there's never been gas in the pipes of this RV ever so we are we're actually we're actually repiping um, down here is a power bright 2200 watt true sine wave inverter it plugs in right here now it's only for 15 amps of service that's all it's for and it's to run the air conditioner and the refrigerator as needed and it'll do both we've untested it and the refrigerator is a little galon so that we get salvaged out of an RV and it's actually physically the same size the same size as the one we took out in internal space roughly about three inches of space right here so I'm going to panel it and make it to where I can store things up in here kind of nice the bathroom is still in the process the skylight being replaced on it with a blower because it never had a fan in it and we've had to pull the staples loose to get the trim ring out so we've got to redo that but everything works a brand new macerator motor installed in here so the toilet does its job down here is going to be an extra water tank a seven gallon water tank with a auto siphon pump to go to the other water tank which is this big monster so we're putting in a 31 gallon water tank under there what used to be like the fender wells of the pickup for this this uh, truck bed camper and we're doing that now we have a new pump for it sitting right up here and the original this is a 110 volt light but it's an led bulb in it a fan now works never did so now it works and we're getting all this somebody had tried to glue the sticker back on when god knows what so we got to get all that cleaned off and we're resurfacing or re redoing everything over here is installed a lighting system that kicks on a set of floods at four points of this rv so if you're out in the woods you're out in the countryside you kick this on it lights up the whole world out there with about 50 watts of leds all around the thing so um the speakers going in the roof up here are the just the cheap pile five by sevens um i mean they're they're not blow you away stuff um, they'll handle 40 good watts of audio so nice pretty little things but they fit really well and they'll make it in there so that's a little walkthrough guys made me on a good almost 20 minute video of uh the trailer emma sitting out here mad at me because i ain't going in yet the conclusion is is that i've been able to build this trailer for practically nothing mostly salvage stuff and i would give you a 100 percent recommendation i don't get a nickel from harbor freight so don't even say it but i'd give you a recommendation of that drill all metal parts powerful ass battery now how long it's going to live i don't know but i can tell you that i can use this for hours on end and it keeps going so uh, hopefully that'll help you think about you know that um the black and deckers are good the milwaukee's kick ass the porter cables hell i've used them for 10 years and i just replaced batteries and rebuild them but this thing quite shocking really performs well and ten dollars cheaper than that you get two batteries a drill two chargers so think about that um but y'all look forward to the rest of this uh we've got the uh hookup of all the batteries we're going to do and show you how we're doing that with double set rollover breakers the way i'm going to set it up and this battery looks like it's hanging out there it's not and this is a the poly blend acid resistant bottom here and the sides have been coated for acid resistance all of this is coated in here now if you can see the tent to it and it's all sealed and it'll be vented here and vented here and no need for anything else it will self-regulate itself the batteries will, are easily removed for servicing because of the type of connectors we're going to put on it and we, you know the wing nuts so giving y'all a heads up on it all we have the floodlights here we have the uh, marker lights here marker lights right up here above the ladder on both sides see that wire up there and down here on the end we'll have in addition another set of marker lights which it's all wired for so 
What do y'all think? Give me your comments. I know that's a long video. Um, I know it's a lot of junk out here, a lot of parts and tools, but when you build things like this, you gotta do it right. All right, guys, stay tuned, watch it, see what we're working with. Hope this one here works for you. Emma's found her back porch, her favorite spot, and the back porch is getting flame next. <laughs>